Okay, for language today, we're going to do this paper. With, it's got the farm animals and things on the front, and on the back, it's got sentences about Noah. Okay, that's what we're going to do today for language. So instead of phonics, we're having language today. So same thing we've been doing for a while. We're looking at pictures and trying to figure out what um, the pictures are describing to us, okay? So if you look at the first picture, we see some pigs with um, a boy and a girl hiding behind a haystack. And the pigs are playing in the mud. So let's look um, at the choices we have to fill in our sentences that go with this piggy picture. Okay, so they did the first one for us. Beth and Bill will hide by the... They answered that one. It was haystack, okay? So that's what you're going to be doing, going through and filling in the circles for the correct answer. So the second sentence, the one with the yellow, says they like to see the blank play. Is it the chick's play, the pig's play, or the horse play? So chick's, pig's, or horse. So again, look at the pictures, figure out what they're watching play. And then the third sentence says, the pigs like the mud, pond, or grass. Mud, pond, or grass. Okay, so that took care of the whole top half. We just did the whole top half together, just like that. Pretty easy, right? So let's look at the cow, okay? We're going to go over to the cow. And again, it says mark the circle under the word in each row that tells about the picture. Okay, so this one picture is a little simpler. We just have a cow sitting in some hay, okay? So the first one they did for us, once again, we had the options of cowbell, farmhouse, or dishpan. And the cowbell is what the cow, uh, if it'll focus, is wearing around his neck. I'm sure you can see it clear on your paper, but what the cow has around his neck is the cowbell. So the blue line, is it a sheep, a cow, or a cat? That one's pretty easy. Fill in the correct answer for the animal. The sheep, the cow, or the cat. And then for the bottom one, you have fruit, grain, or hay. I'll give you a hint. It's what the cow is sitting on. Is the cow sitting on fruit? Is he sitting on grain? Or is he sitting on hay? Okay, so that's the of the cow. Now we get to go to my least favorite things over here that I don't like at all. <laughs> the mouse. <laughs> okay, so we're going to match the two phrases. Well, they're not exactly phrases, but the two sides to make good sentences. So a good sentence has to make sense. Like, right, we don't want to say um, a mouse has his thin. That doesn't make any sense, does it? or a mouse has run fast, okay? So we wanna figure out which one makes sense. So the first one you have over here, you have a mouse has. So figure out which one make would make a good sentence. Would it be a mouse has run fast, a mouse has a tail, or a mouse is thin? Which one of these over here would make a good sentence with a mouse has? A mouse has run fast, a mouse has a tail, or a mouse is thin. Okay, so now for the second one on this side with the capital letter, you have his tail. So is it his tail run fast, his tail a tail, that just makes no sense at all, or his tail is thin? Which one makes sense to make a good sentence? His tail run fast, his tail a tail, or his tail is thin. And then, of course, you're going to match your last two, but let's go ahead and go over it. Is You have he can. Is it he can run fast, he can a tail, or he can is thin? Okay, so again, make sure they make sense, because if a sentence doesn't make sense, it doesn't have a complete thought, then nobody's going to want to read it, are they? Okay, so that took care of the front, which was pretty easy. So now let's look at the back. We have... Sentences about Noah, and we talked about Noah, it's been about um, almost a month ago. We learned about Noah in Bible class. Okay, so we're going to write each sentence correctly. Hmm. So write sentences correctly. It tells us not to forget the capital letter and the period. So in order to write a sentence correctly, it has to start with a, a capital letter. 
capital letter and end with a, so far we've learned that they end with a period, okay? So I wrote them on here how they are written in the yellow box. We've got God had Noah make an ark. So what am I going to correct in this sentence, God had Noah make an ark, to make it correct? That's the first thing I'm going to do. Right, the G needs to be capitalized. I don't know if my marker will work or not. I was going to try to use a different color. <laughs> I think I need to buy me some new markers for church, don't you think? <laughs> okay. That's where I'm at, by the way. I'm <laughs> my classroom at the church, <laughs> in case you were wondering. <laughs> okay, that'll work. So, we have a capital G for God. And then what else does this sentence need? It needs a period at the end of the sentence. Okay, so the second sentence says, God saved Noah from the flood. So what is corrected in this sentence? The G needs capitalized again. And what goes at the end of the sentence? Period. And the third sentence says, Then Noah praised God. So what's going to be capitalized? The T. And what goes at the end of the sentence? A period. Okay, so I just crossed them out, but you they want you to rewrite the sentences correctly on the lines, okay? So make sure you got your proper spacing, you're staying above the red line, and rewrite it with a capital letter and a period at the end for each sentence, okay? So while we have Noah, let's review Noah. We know that God had Noah make an ark. Why did he have Noah make an ark? Right, because he was going to send a flood and destroy the world. And why was he going to do that? Because they stopped listening to him. They became wicked, didn't want anything to do with God anymore, so he was going to destroy the world. Okay, so God, did Noah listen to God? Yes. Noah listened to God, and so God um, saved Noah from the flood, which was our second sentence. So because of Noah's obedience and faith and trust in God, he was saved from the flood. So after they were saved and they're from the flood and they're back on the dry ground, we see the rainbow. The rainbow was put in the sky as a promise from God that he would never destroy the earth, the whole earth, again with a flood. Okay, so then God, uh, Noah built an altar to give thanks to God, and that's what our third sentence says. Then Noah praised God. So what we can learn from these three sentences is that God will um, protect us and keep us safe. And when he does do something for us, whether it is providing us with safety or providing us um, with just our daily food, what everything that God does for us, we should praise him for it, like Noah praised God. Noah praised God for saving him, and we need to praise God for all that he does for us, too, okay? So, like I said we, before, we do tend to take things for granted, like our food every day or, you know, a nice warm bed to sleep in. And we take all those things for granted, but really, God is the one that gives us um, the means to buy those things, right? He gives us the money we need for to go buy good food and the warm bed and the warm blankets. And so we need to thank God for providing all that he does for us, okay? So if you have any questions with any of this worksheet or anything at all, uh, feel free to ask me. But you're looking at the pictures for these two, for sections one and two, the pig and the cow, and filling in the blank that goes with the, or the word that goes with the picture for the lovely icky mouse. You're matching the sentence, uh, you're matching the two sides to make complete sentence. A complete thought for each sentence of what it makes a good sentence and on the back you're correcting the sentences um, by putting a capital letter and a period at the end okay so if you have any questions or need help with anything let me know